Anybody? Would like to go first? Please don't waste my time. Huh? Move very fast. Uh, I can go first. Just read the questions and the answers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I asked my character what is uh, the problem she's facing. And she said that she was terrified of her roommate. Uh, can, you, having... can you read the dialogue? Oh, the dialogue. Uh, the interview. Don't describe. Oh, oh okay. So um, the question is, what are the problems that you are having? Who's talking? Uh, me, asking okay. the character. All right. All right. So she said that. Um, I was actually... Oh, does, she, does she have a name? Yes. Does she have a name? Uh, she doesn't have a name because I'm using the first POV. Oh, I see. All right. So you didn't give your, the other person a name? No. Okay. I'm sticking with the first POV. All right. Okay, uh, she said that um, I was terrified of my roommate uh, despite I have to live with her and I cannot run away because I was being dared to. And then I asked her, uh, I asked her first, why, does, why are you so afraid of your roommate? And then she said that it's because my roommate was a ghost who hunts this abandoned dorm. And then I asked her, why do you have to take to there? And she said that I was trying to prove to my friends that I can do things out of my norm. So I asked her again, what is your norm? And then she said that I like to stay in my room and finish whatever assignment I had and then watch some movies and read some stories. I know that I rarely go outside for the social event and would only leave for the room for the food and the weekend outing. Uh, for the weekend out there at the cinema. Even though my norm isn't that very colorful, but I still live differently every day. And then I was like, okay, and I asked her again. So why, if you're so terrified of your roommate, why you don't, why you refuse to build on your dare? And then she said that, I didn't think I could actually. And that thought somehow didn't occur to me because I was so terrified that my mind was back. But after she left, after my roommate left, suddenly my mind is like not being terrified. There's no terror. It's like nothing happened. And the thought of bailing on my dare left me. So, uh, and then I asked her this. Um, okay, you said you have your norm, you have your routine. But it sounds like you are still living in your room even though you change a little bit of your norm. And she said that I did not. I changed my meals, I guess. I changed my path, I guess. But I, I still don't live on my routine. I live out of my norm. So that's what she said. And I asked her also about her values. And she said that she, she said that I believe in karma. So if I cause anything to hurt my roommate, she will hurt me as well. That's why I'm trying not to inflict any annoyance to her. And I also believe that the routine is part of living. However, no one should stick to it and move without thinking. In other words, that we shouldn't be living or routine only because that does not differentiate us from those who aren't breathing. So that's kind of contradict from what she believes and what she said and what she does. So that's why I have interviewed her so far. Oh, very good, lah, Amy. That's good. I would like to ask you how much of this interview were incorporated in your original story? Did much of the thing you have shared with us were also in the story um, or did you, feel that, did you feel that this interview expanded your understanding of your character uh, it did actually because in the story i didn't incorporate why she does this why she doesn't bail on her dare if she's so terrified mm -hmm. so by asking this question i can see yes. like why it's much more interesting you know because, you know, you added more drama into it, you know, and then we understand your character better because she's explaining why, you know. 
So I think, you know, this is one uh, foolproof technique that you can use when you rewrite, when you want to write your character. Ask questions. Pretend there's a, that there is an interview. You know, one of the assignments I had when I was doing my creative writing course with Oxford online was that they said, pick a famous person. All right. Uh, and I decided on Madame Curie the female scientist that discovered apani, a lot of things, right, in science. So I, I choose her character and I research about her. What did she do, her life, and so on and so forth. And then I pretend that I was, I think that the, I pretended that I was a TV, a radio anchor for BBC, uh, BBC4. So I was interviewing Madame Curie as a TV anchor. And you know, what I discovered was I went into her psyche, not just looking at, us, at her as a historical figure, but her as a person, her as a woman, because we ask questions, you know? So how is it your woman thing? You know, this is like a time where women are not supposed to advance in science, blah, blah, blah. How is it that you get to go there? And then you invent and you, but your invention must also based on some facts as well. So it makes it plausible. I enjoyed doing that kind of um, assignment because one, it makes you research. Two is that you, you start to look at things from different perspective. All right, that's a good one. Can we have another uh, volunteer? Perhaps three, three more? Please move faster. I don't like this waiting game. Just say, I want to go. Hello, hello. Yeah, thank you, Lokman. Yes. No, no, I'm still quite cool. I have a question. I still think I'm confused. Uh, do, who do we need to uh, interview? Your character the, from your last assignment. Uh, that, yeah. You have not done that? You came late then? Eh? Did oh, you come okay. late? Uh, all right. So who no, else? No, uh, uh, do you want to go? Lokman, you have not done your work. I'm still doing. Okay, we'll give you some time. Anybody else? I would like to try. Yeah, good. All right, okay. Uh, so my character's name is Sophia. Uh -huh. So Sophia has a roommate called uh, Rose. So my first question is that I asked Sophia um, why she always watches K-drama. Because um, in my story, she often fill her time by watching drama. <coughs> so when I asked her, she said that... Um, the first reason is because she feels like her life is too simple and too plain. There is no drama. So she's living vicariously through the drama that she watches. And also she enjoys watching um, uh, Korean drama with the theme of family love because, because that's something that she does not have in real life. So that's why she watches K-drama. And then the second one is that uh, I asked her why she always um, uh, tweeted sad lyrics on her Twitter account. And then she said that because sometimes there are times where she feel um, really sad and really empty, but she doesn't really have anyone to talk to. So the only thing that she can think of is um, finding sad lyrics and tweet it because by doing that, she actually feel like, oh, there's someone who actually share the same feeling as me. So that was the second question. And then the third question is that I asked her, how does she feel towards Rose treatment to her? Because in the story, Rose is um, uh, described as someone who is very clingy and often um, bothered um, Sophia. So she said that at first, when she came into the room, she was kind of overwhelmed with the way Rose treated her because nobody really, act nobody actually really mm -hmm. cared for her before. But then over the time, she actually really enjoys mm -hmm. Rose's attention to her. However, because she is not used to affection, she does not know how to express her gratitude to Rose. And my last question to her is that, um, why did she ask Rose to go to the cafe the other day? She said that um, although she told Rose that she actually does not like um, Rose's attention toward her, she secretly missed the way Rose treated her with affection, which is why she decided to ask Rose to the cafe. So, mm. 
That, that's good. Did you find that you have a better understanding of her character and in-depth? Yeah. In question like deeper, yes. Yeah. And would you, how would you like change the story with this additional information? Mm, maybe I would try to include more towards um, Sophia's personal point of view because in my story, I just described what she did without mm. mentioning the reason why she did what she did. Yeah, right. And also the values. Yes. What kind of values does she have? What, Sophia? Ah, the, your leading character. Uh, she's um, the value. Uh, like she's someone who's trying to find. Uh, she's someone who seek for love, but then she does not really know how to act when the love is there. So like she, uh, her character is um, like trying. So she cannot. She cannot express. So one word is to say she is an introvert. Yeah. Because she cannot verbalize her feelings. Yes, yes. Kind of. Probably that is your point. That mm. you've got an introvert character who yeah. cannot verbalize her feelings. This is her conflict. This is her inner struggle. This is her internal struggle. And the story should be like, how does she overcome it? Mm. And she treats, you see. Um, that's one way to cope. But at the end of it, does she change? Does her character change? Or does she remain the same? Um, she actually changed a little bit after she find out the reason why her uh, roommate um, act that way. So actually change. Yeah. Okay. All right. But uh, have this practice every time you write something. You know, you may not just write for this class. Continue to write and post your stories elsewhere. Don't, don't come like twice a week to my class and then that's the only exercise that you do. As, as you know, just write stories and send them out. Find online outlets for you to send your, your stories. Because at the end of the semester, I want, if not all of you, many of you are published writers. Even if you're published online, you are considered as published writer. So, you know, at least when you do this, you could put that in your CV to say, I'm also a writer. My short story appeared online in this, this, this e-magazine, or I won a competition in this, 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 this competition. So I also write creatively. You want to bring out this into your career because that is an added value. Not everybody can write creatively, but you have to have evidence that you are a writer. We, we are trying, I, I, I've, I hope to do and um, filter yeah, some of your best stories. Maybe, as I said, we compiled it and then we self-publish it. Yeah, and then we just distribute it among our people. Even that you can claim, you say, well, we publish our own collection and we sold probably at uh, Elite's event. Whenever you have Elite's event, you sell uh, this book. All right. So that means I have to really start looking at your work and then edit it and then get you to sign and then we compile and then we we start. You you have uh, Elite's, Elite's event kan? or you can organize one like 3055 creative writing book sale or creative writing reading. So you organize event and then you sell your book. Dua ringgit ke tiga ringgit, it doesn't matter. We hope to do this, yeah? Hopefully COVID will be lifted. Sharifa is very late. Yeah? Sharifa, you're very late, yeah, Sharifa? Were you here before just now? Or did you just come in? Uh, sorry, my laptop. I am using my laptop. Just put down. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, all right. That's that's good. Um, next, can we have two more volunteers before we move on? Now, if you don't share your work, you're not going to learn anything. You know, you just keep quiet. So I don't know whether you understood my lesson or not. You know. So you have to talk. In my creative class, you have to talk because that is how we learn.
Hanani, yes. Ah, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, there are a few questions I ask my character. The first one is, what is your family background? So, uh, my character has a name. Uh, her name is Mina. So, she, she answered me that uh, she lost her father. And she feel very loneliness because uh, she's the only child in the family. And since uh, she was uh, the only child in the family, she always get the burden of uh, need to score good grades in academic. Okay, but, and then I asked her if she has friend it, uh, in school. And then uh, she said that um, she have a lot of friends. She love to talk with strangers. She like to make friends, but she don't have a close friend. So that's mean uh, when uh, she always repress her feeling because she just she just have friends from someone who just to say hi and bye. Um, and then the next answer, uh, question is why she make that decision? Because in my story, uh, Mina uh, want to end her life. So mm -hmm. she said that uh, because. Uh, it has been triggering her for so many time, so long time, and then uh, during during that time, um, she said that it is like she is conscious but in unconsciousness because her mind block. Uh, she find a dead end, and uh, all those uh, whirling al around in her mind is assumption and way of thinking, which is like overthinking. And all he, uh, she feels is frightening, anxiety, worries, and she only uh, think of worse possibilities. But in that story, um, finally, Mina is saved by her mom. So um, I asked Mina why um, her mom saved her. And then she said that whatever it is, if you have a problem or anything with your family or with your mom, mom always have special connection with uh, the ch uh, with the children. And then uh, how her mother triggered her to uh, to feel better is by uh, remember her about uh, remind her about religion. So uh, Mina is someone who always find religion find a uh, peacefulness in religion uh, but it's not always it's not always I mean like um, it sometimes takes time and she want to tell the others that um, if, if you search for religion you will finally fi find it that's all okay um, did you help you with expanding the character if you were to rewrite? Would it, would it help you if you were to rewrite uh, the, your character? Yeah. You think it would, huh? Now, at the mention of, you know, the other thing to also add colour to your character is once you know that the character has a certain, certain tendency, for example, suicidal, suicide tendency, what you can do is also to research on that. What kind of people are prone to this suicidal behavior? You will find that people with acute sense of depression, bipolar, and so on. Then read up what bipolarism is all about. So probably all those things you could inject in your story. Not to tell, but to show. But with the kind of information attached to that kind of disorder. Faham tak, Anani? So a lot of, you know, we can expand and expand. That's why stories, it won't do just to have one draft. Yeah? We yeah. rewrite and rewrite, reread, read, read. Reading is very important in creative writing. One is to expose you to different styles of writing different ways of thinking. Two is that the different kind of genre, the different kind of strategies and approach. So when you are exposed to this, your way of thinking and style will also be diverse. Right? You see different angles, different ways, how other writers do it. 
So Hanani, if you were to write it, uh, what aspect would you change in the story? In the maybe I maybe I will explain more how she feels, which make it make uh, make her difference from uh, other normal people. Yeah, but don't tell. Yeah, you have to show. All right. You have to show. That is the tricky part. Don't tell. You, you could say, oh, she's very suicidal. That's telling. You could oh, say, I you know, always confuse how show and tell sometimes. What I'm telling is that, oh, she's suicidal. That's telling. But you want to show to say that that night she woke up distraught and she didn't know what was wrong. She would pace up and down the, the kitchen, her eye scan the drawer and she look at forks and she look at knife thinking which one would be better to use mm. ah that's showing so don't tell her that she poked her eyes with fork oh, yeah, yeah. Ah. so she was like thinking you tak cakap pun dia suicidal she's just looking and thinking which one it's better to use. Uh, you may think, oh, she wants to use it for her bread, whether, you know, to cut the bread or not. You give the, the reader that suspect, maybe she's using it for her bread. She, she's hungry. Then, she went upstairs and then she used whatever. Knife. Oh. Oh. Because in my writing, I did include it, but mm -hmm. um, maybe it's less dramatic. I will try to improve yeah. it. Yeah, no problem. It is a progress. It is a process. Yeah, you may not get it right, but as we discuss and develop and as you read, you get better. It is it's just the first assignment. We're just going through so that the second assignment and the third and the fourth will be better. All right, good. Next. Hello, hello. Yes. Uh, I just done it and it's not that long and uh, this is my uh, interview with uh, my character. Okay. And my character named Ali from my uh, assignment and I asked him uh, many questions like uh, do you look yourself as a perfect human person? Uh, and he said that uh, no because uh, but when I uh, going around the campus and all everybody will talk that uh, Ali uh, Ali name, Ali, Ali, Ali. And then your name was summoned. And may I ask you why? And Ali said that I just do what I can. And smiling and helping others are my motto. And I've done nothing big that can change the campus. So uh, I asked him, uh, who make you to become uh, a helping uh, person? You know, love to help others. And then Ali said that uh, my parents uh, were volunteers before for an NGO and they also have like a, a big big job you know like big career but they also make time for uh, their time uh, for uh, volunteering and they first met they and that and then they get married but uh, that's what that's uh, how uh, he become who he is but in campus my gang met me and then I asked him what have the gang makes you to be a helping person and Ali said that uh, to be true, uh, truthfully, I admit that uh, his noble deeds, like helping others and smiling, is just a way for him uh, as a therapy. Like I help others and maybe uh, I will become a good person and maybe it's like a, a, ther a therapy, a therapy. But I was wrong. I was con and reality just hit me. When I do like uh, helping others, Maybe I just like take advantage of my uh, of my deed of my noble deed, so there I can find that uh, who is my real friend and who is not, and I learned that uh, a new a new lesson that uh, you a uh, person even if you want to help others you need to be aware of who you uh, who you helping, if not it will uh, backfire or backstab you. So I asked him what kind of people are you gang. And Ali said that they are just your uh, average person, you know, like normal person. But sometimes like Halim, he's a loud mouth. And others guys too, uh, Rowdy. I don't remember much about my friend, but uh, there are some person who held my hand and massaged me. And it's like, it feels like 
uh, I always have others, but I never feel that others also can help me. And it feel like uh, I'm also weak. I need help too. So uh, the last question I ask is, uh, you have a beautiful smile. And then I say like, thank you. Uh, that, that's all. Okay. So how is your interview different? from the character you have uh, coined in your last story? Uh, when I do the interview, I feel that, oh, I can make this story, I can make this story. Like, there's a new plot, there's a new uh, story that I can read. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I think before I, I was I was writing like a uh, three page, I feel that when I do in the interview and I ask my character, mm -hmm. like, he's a living person. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can write like a six or seven page more, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like, I'm like I can write more yeah. bi a biography about him. Yeah, but yeah, it's like and it becomes much more interesting as you say it because you know even as you say it, I was looking at the value angle, uh, whereby you know usually it's very cliche. We we end up concluding like oh, you know, be careful with who you help, you know. Uh, if I help you and then people backstab me, uh, and then the, let, the take home lesson is I'll be very careful. Whereas in Islam, when we help people, we don't expect anything in return. We forget that. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. So I was thinking, like, hey, that sounds like me. But, but you know, as you were saying it, 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 it just dawned on me, like, I shouldn't be like that also. Because in Islam, when we help, we help sincerely. We don't expect anything for return. So probably if you add in that value in your story, then your story will become something enlightening for others. Because others are, the average people will say that, lah, ha, aku dulu tolong dia, tak sedar diri, dia, dia dah kaya, dia buat lagi macam. You know, this is common remark, right? Oh, yeah, okay. So... So you turn around and say, no, you don't, you don't expect that. You know, it's okay. So probably the thing is that, well, I learned that when you give, you give unconditionally, don't expect anything in return, then you will have that perpetual permanent smile on your face. So uh -huh. you are at ease with yourself, you are redo, you are comfort, nothing can hurt you. Because you know, when you help, you let go. You don't hang on to it. There's a story about these two monks, Buddhist monks. One is old, senior. The other one is a young recruit, young monk. So the young monk said, I want to follow you to learn from you. And the old monk said, okay, okay here you go. So, but you follow what I do and, you know, and just listen, you know, and just learn from me. So they walk, 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 walk over many valleys, many mountains, then came to a place where they met this beautiful, sexy young girl. And there was a puddle. So the girl, the girl could not go through the lopa because she didn't want to wet her feet or whatever, whatever. And then what the old mom did was lift her up and help her cross the puddle. And then put her down and continue the journey. So the young mom was like saying, you know, how can he, a man of great learning, such a woman, why did he do that? And he said this, he said that, but in practice he did this, he did that. But he did not, he dare not ask. But after a while, he could not contain himself anymore. So at one stop, he asked the master, Master, why did you touch the woman? Look at the woman. You know, you know that we are supposed not to do all those things, your mums. Then the master said, Young man, I I touch her, I lift her up, and I put her down, and I left her there. But apparently, you carried her all the journey. Get it? Yeah, I get it, I get it. Ah, 
just want to show that right? I huh? just want to show that uh, Ali also is not perfect. So yeah. he also have uh, that's why I want to show. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. But I'm saying that every story must have the own factor. What is the own factor that will enlighten your student, your, your reader? Okay. We have to look for that, yeah? We have to look for that. Yeah, just so, missed that. Huh? I, I missed that point. Tapa, it's a learning thing. It's a learning thing, Lokman. I'm just saying that how else you can improve your work. Um, um, so the story, you know, it's just like the story of Nabi Musa and uh, uh, Nabi Kidir. Nabi Kidir. He, what? Kidir. Kidir. Kan, sama kan? Uh, I understand the story. It's almost like that. You know, the, the thing is that uh, sometimes we don't know why people do, but as a writer, you can have that omnipresent perspective. Yeah? And uh, how you unfold that would be interesting. All right, we have one more. One more, please. Thank you, madam. Okay. Hey, yeah. Uh, Ni, one more. Who would like to share? And the rest of you will never have the opportunity to share your work and find ways how you can improve your character because you don't want to speak. Ask um, right. Maybe me, I'd like to give it a try. Who's that? Uh, it's uh, Subairu Siti Hajara. Okay, Siti Hajara, yes. Okay, um, so I asked my character, what is wrong with your character? Uh, she was terribly affected after her own sibling passed away due to the closeness with her sibling no, and no one to spend time with after he dies. She develops her own friend in her mind as a coping mechanism. And then I asked her, what is the reason you constantly repeat the same number and then uh, say that you never counted those numbers? And then she says that um, the moment the doctor handed in the documents of my dead brother, I saw that he passed away at uh, 6 a.m. and 30, 30 minutes and 52 seconds. And ever since then, I have been stuck in that particular time. And then I asked, um, there is a song that you hum uh, all the time. Um, what is that song and why do you sing it? And she says that it is cupcakes, rainbow, sunshine, chocolate. Cupcakes, rainbow, sunshine and chocolate. And the reason I sing it is because uh, my friend at the hospital once told me whenever I go through something bad, you can think of four nice things and then uh, sing it as a sing song way. And I sing it because uh, whenever I go through something, uh, those four words are my happy place. And then finally, uh, I ask her, so when did you realize that Fatima is not real? And then she says, um, uh, my friend at the hospital told me that Fatima is not real, but then I believe she is because she's my best friend. And that's it. How did it help you with your character, the interview? Um, I think it helped my character become more real and it added depth to the character. Mm. So, okay, please use this technique in your next assignment, yeah? Okay. When is the next assignment due? Soon, right? Next Friday. Ah, so some of you have started writing it, right? Yeah. Okay, revise your character, ask more questions, add in a lot of adjectives, put in emotion, give it a twist, surprise your reader, give the um. What are the values? What are the values clash? What is the values uh, at a cross section? How does she or he address it? And also pay attention whether it's a flat character, round character, and so on. So you've got enough information now, more information for your second assignment. So you will see that in writing, it is a process. It will not be perfect, but as we go, we learn and we, we revise. If I were to give you everything in the first class, there's no time, right? We will not be able to like consume everything. So we give bit by bit. And by the time you finish, hopefully, you will have we will have at least a few published writers. So I would encourage you Google up, look for outlets for you to send your poems or your short stories, and then come back and tell us where 
your articles or your entries have been accepted. I did that in the first class. Uh, I make it like, I make it um, an aside, a grading thing. I said, if your work gets published, you get points. But I find that that quite that is quite tough because it's not easy to get published. But at least you try. But you do it because that will boost up your confidence as a writer. And sometimes people that you meet will help you develop further. They will give you feedback. They say, oh, I like your work because this, 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 this. Yeah? Even if they reject your work, at least they will tell you why they don't like it. So Google out for e-magazines, journals, whatever, that call for entries. If you have competitions, better. All right? And let me know when your work has been accepted. One of my students became a published writer in Canada, in UK, I don't know where else, because he did this, yeah? And then um, he, he, he has his own blog as well. Uh, and he does reading online. You can set up your own YouTube or your podcast. And then um, even that can go in your CV. You could say, uh, I have my own podcast where I read my stories or my thoughts. And I've got how many people liking it and so on and so forth. So do something. Don't wait for things to happen. You do things yeah, instead of waiting for someone to say, oh, can you submit your paper? But you, you could actually um, initiate that yourself. Any question at this juncture before we move on to other uh, things? Are you okay with POVs? Or do you um, want more, more lessons on it? Yes. Uh, the, the assignment deadline is this week or next week? The second assignment? Yes, yeah, uh, this week. Let me check. Check your check your course outline. It's all there, right? The dates are all there. Next week, 30 November. Um, writing project 2, 13th of November. It's in your course outline. All your deadlines are all in your course outline. Please refer to it. Are we in week 4 or week 5? Yeah, week four, week four. We are week four. So actually, we have jumped the gun. Week five is a POV's point of view. Uh, and then week six is also there. Yeah, I didn't expect it to, to finish so fast. So let us look at the... Did you have a look at the video clip that somebody posted on a POV? In your WhatsApp. What's up, bro? Go to your WhatsApp group. Uh, I think Aisha said point of view, YouTube. Have you watched that? Class? Yes. Yes. Um, basically, what, what is the take home lesson from that? But basically, he addresses only two POVs, right? First person and third person. What's your take on this YouTube? Class? I don't know whether you're there or not. Talk to me. Yeah, 
Anybody wants to comment on that YouTube? Basically, it's what we have gone through, right? It's what I have taught you. Is there any additional information in that YouTube that we have not covered? Hanani? No, I just, in my comment, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I easily understand the first person um, explanation, but I hardly understand the third person explanation. What did he say about the third person? Okay, limited means um, he doesn't have, he's not the omniscient narrator. Remember when I read you the example yesterday when he said he walked down the road and then which, you know, and the shop which had a Roman village. But in another uh, narration, it did mention the Roman village. So that's limited. It's not omnipresent. Right? It only knows something. Sometimes it's limited because you can't know what the other characters are feeling. The woman at the shop. Limited point of view is that the person doesn't know she hated him deeply. Just saw that she gave what is physical. He saw her give him a funny look. But unlimited perspective would say that funny look became because deeply she hated him. Faham tak, Hanani? Does that make sense? Uh, is that like as a reader, uh, we can see the full view yeah. because as something like that, right? Yes. So for you, it's about your relationship to the text. Yeah, but your relationship to the text is actually controlled by the narrator. And the narrator is, of course, the writer. It's quite complicated when you look at it that way, but it's quite straightforward. The story is written by a writer. Writer chooses a certain POV. POV is what controls you. Okay. I think, I think he's it is implied. It's implied. When you go to the toilet, it's implied. Like it's no good, right? When a man and woman go to the toilet, of course you know you're up to no good. First, you know, you cannot have both sets in one toilet, yeah? So that's already breaking the code of ethics. So if the narrator sees things when he's not supposed to see, then that's omnipresent, right? Don't, don't be too bothered about the terminologies, the yeah, objective, the omnipresent, yeah? but I think um, the objective, how did you explain the objective system? Uh. Hmm. 
Um, if you are omnipresent, you know what the other person is thinking and feeling. But if it's just a straightforward narrative like she or he, without being omnipresent or omniscient, then you just show. You understand or not? But you don't tell because once you say, oh, he's feeling sad, that's, that's already going through into that feeling and telling us that's not a good story. So usually a narrator would just take us through the story. All right. Uh, but as a reader, if the character is saying, the narrator is saying some, some you know, he, he started smashing uh, vases, then you know that person is angry. But the other characters do not know because they are not in the picture. You faham that? So your relationship with the text is more it's more holistic than say characters and characters. Can you get it? Oh. So just, just understand what omnipresent is, limited uh, worldview, and then um, and then the basic thing is to show, not there. You describe emotions. You don't say he said. He came home, you know, step on the small end, which was, which was just doing his job. You know, taking food to his queen, and he trampled on it mercilessly. And he went into the kitchen, looked for the most fragile uh, sauce, a penny saucer or glass and smash it into pieces. And then he went back to his lazy chair, sat down on it, breathed in, breathed in a deep breath, and started to smile. Nampak tak? Nampak how crazy this person is? When a single sentence can say, it's mad. It's abusive. That's telling. But when you show, you describe every movement, you describe what he does in his anger, in his rage, and so on. Can you follow, class? Yes. All right. So basically, um, any more questions? Because, you know, POV, we were supposed to go through until week six. So I have to change that. And then showing and telling. So probably what we can do is uh, to look for more examples for the next. Well, after your, after your uh, writing, probably I will bring in more examples to show point of view. Maybe we will do second person. Second person. Who have done first person extensively. Uh, perhaps next lesson we will do second person. And um, omniscient, uh, maybe I will do that as well. Right? And then we will look at showing and telling. If you have good examples, bring to class as well. Yeah? Showing, uh, example. And then uh, second person example and omniscient, uh, omniscient example. And we'll bring that to class um, next class. Let me show, because we still have like um, 23 minutes. Let me show you a video clip. Um,
very often eh, you won't find a uh, you point of view. Very often you don't. But I'm going to give you this one, point of view in a story, the basic. Let's see if it covers what we wanted to see. This is Margaret. Little Red Riding Hood. Let's start the story in depth. Okay. I'm going to put this and you can, I'm going to put this in your inbox. Um, chat, chat box. Eh? You go to this YouTube, you can switch off your upper number. Microphone as you listen to it, and then we come back and discuss yeah, after you have finished uh, listening to it. Can you do that now, please, class? Go to this YouTube by Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood is a, a writer, a novelist, yeah, um, and she's giving this talk. Please go to this. Hi, YouTube. I'm Stephanie Noah, and this is the Life of a Writer channel. Today's video, point of view in a story, the basics. So if you want to connect with readers and sell more books, make sure to subscribe and get new content to your inbox every Tuesday. But in this video, we're going to be discussing the basics of point of view. Now, this is one of those subject matters that you can really delve a lot deeper into. But I wanted to start with the basics so that those of you who have an idea for a novel and maybe you've even started your novel, you're sure on the point of view that you want to have for your particular story. So in this video, we're going to discuss the basics of the differences between first and third person and then we'll also talk about ways that you can go about choosing a point of view for your story so let's get into it. what is point of view so in fictional writing point of view is the narrator's position in relation to the story being told so let's start with first person point of view and i want to start there because first person tends to be the viewpoint that is the most comfortable for first time writers and that's because that's the way we talk in everyday life so when we're speaking we're using pronouns like i or me or we or us and that's exactly what you're going to do when writing in first person point of view now when you're writing in first person point of view you're coming from the perspective of the one character. So everything is coming through that character's eyes. So obviously that has its pros as well as its cons. Some of the pros are is that you have a really intimate relationship between the reader and the writer because you're really deep into the mindset of that particular character. Um, some of the cons are that sometimes it's difficult to um, get the perspective or the feelings and the thoughts of other characters within the story because everything is coming from the viewpoint of that one character. And then also it can be very difficult to describe that main character because they're telling the story themselves. So with third person point of view, the narrator is going to describe exactly what the characters do and what happens to them. So for example, with third person omniscient, the narrator is going to know exactly what is happening within the world and what is happening with each one of the characters. Whereas with third person limited, the narrator only knows what's happening with the one character as the story unfolds. So what's the point of view for your story? Please share in the comment section below. So the main thing you want to consider when thinking about point of view for your story is what is the expectation of the genre that you write in? Now, the reason why that's so important is because you don't want to steer too far away from what the majority of people are doing and have proven to be successful. And especially for new writers, maybe as you get more skin in the game and you have learned and mastered these different points of views, you may decide to step out. But when you're starting with your very first book, you want to make it easy for yourself as well as for your readers. So you definitely want to stay for what the majority of people are doing. So the first thing you want to do is you want to head over to Amazon and purchase a couple of copies of books within your genre, or you want to use my tip, which I absolutely love, and that's to use the look inside feature. And I love the look inside feature because it allows you to see the first 
15% of a book, and that gives you just enough information to kind of see the pronouns that are being used, how the characters are being described, how the world is being described, and that's going to be so helpful with, for you so that you can figure out how you want to go about choosing point of view for your story. So once you've done that, you want to just look and see what are the majority of the authors using that. If there happens to be a split, then I suggest that you just go with the point of view that feels most comfortable for you. But if you see that everyone else is going in a certain direction, you definitely want to take that direction as well. So if you want to connect with readers and sell more books, make sure to subscribe and get new content to your inbox every Tuesday. Otherwise, make sure you check out my entire playlist, How to Write a Good Fiction Book, where I walk you through the entire process of writing a fiction book from plots to characters. As always, all of my social media links will be in the description box below. If you're looking to hire me as your writing coach, you'll find that information there as well. And I look forward to talking with you in my next video. Good grammar and spelling are important, but if you want to write essays that inspire, messages that forge brighter connections, and emails that get the job done, you need to think about more than just grammar and spelling. This sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. Grammarly's cutting edge technology helps you craft compelling, understandable writing that makes an impact on your reader. Much better. Grammarly works where you work, on your computer or your phone. Imagine what you could do with the secrets of the world's best writers at your fingertips. Anytime you need them. Are you ready to give it a try? Installation is simple and free. Visit Grammarly.com today. They make art because that's what human beings do. As a writer, your goal is to keep your you need a professional logo for your brand. Your I've used the new Wix logo maker to create one for my startup. I'll show you how. When I wrote First, it, go to Wix logo maker. Hi YouTube, author Stephanie Noor in this. Somewhere at some time. The reason I made that rule is that I didn't want anybody saying you certainly have an evil imagination You made up all these bad things. I didn't think it up. If you really do want to write and you're struggling to get started, you're afraid of something. Remember, it's only you and the page. The waste paper basket is your friend. It was invented for you by God. People are always coming up with me. Okay, class, did you uh, listen to that basic rules of POVs? Hello? Nasreen? Where is everybody? Are you still listening to the... YouTube. Uh, I think they're still listening to it. Uh, yeah, Sharifa? I think they're still listening to it. Oh, I see. Okay. Did you finish uh, listening to it? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay, sorry. So once you have finished with listening to the YouTube, come back yeah, and talk to me. I'm here. I'm done. You're done, siapa tu? Amy. Amy, uh, what do you think? You saw the basic one, yeah? Basic. Uh, the first video? Uh, the first video. The second one also finished. Margaret Atwood. I actually have seen that video before. Uh, Margaret Atwood. Uh, yeah. Ah, okay. So what do you think? Did you find that it added to your knowledge of uh, writing? Uh, kind of because she pointed out that um, there's difficulties describing the main character because you're sort of becoming the narrator, the one that you're telling. It's the first person POV. Who? Oh, the first video or the second? Uh, the first video. Okay. So she talks about 
it, when we're using the first person POV, we're sort of being that person because we're seeing what the person is seeing. Yeah. So sometimes we have difficulties describing the main character because sometimes the main character doesn't know themselves very much. Yeah. So that is very interesting, I think. Yeah. So actually, how we how we judge the character is via the description of the narrator, right? In a way. So my question to you is, how much freedom is it for us as a reader to read outside what the narrator wants us to believe? Can you repeat? I don't get it. Okay, um, it's quite complicated. <laughs> the question is, because how we see the characters is shaped by the POV given by the writer. Writer is the one who gives us the POV, right? Hmm? Yes. POV. Okay. So if it's especially with first point of view, you will be taken through the story by this worldview, this point of view. My question is, how much freedom is there for us to read outside what is given by the first person narrator? Take, for example, the bath. Uh, the bath, Catherine Mansfield, kan? Uh, Janet Frame. Janet Frame in the bath wanted us to feel sorry for this old aged woman who is lonely. That's the story. At the end of the story, we feel like, oh, poor person. You know, the world is so bad. You know, she's so helpless. That's what the narrator wants us to feel. My question is, how much can we how much freedom do we have to not believe this projection that when you are old, you're helpless, you're sad, all, all old people go through this and we're supposed to feel sorry and empathy for them. So what happened? Uh, yeah. I would say the... Uh... I would say half, we have the freedom half amount because half of it, we have like a guidance what the story will be and another half is our true opinion on the particular method. It's like when the first POV is like we are reading someone else's letter, it's being written in the first POV, first person POV, but we're reading somehow, we're reading as an outsider in, into a glimpse of other people's lives. Mm. So yes, yeah. we whatever the first person, whatever the narrative is writing down is telling us what happened, what uh, he or she thought. We still have our own opinion on the particular matter. So um, I've read this book, um, Percy Jackson. It's yeah. written on the first person POV as well. Yeah, and as uh, Percy going on this adventure what the author's taking Percy into meeting a new person in this uh, sort of thought. Um, I have this opinion that he shouldn't do something like that even though he did do it. Mm. Did you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, when you choose to differ with the narrator, this is your critic side on you, which we will do later in writing in the course. You as an art critic, you as a critic of the literary piece that you do. Now we are looking at processes. But, you know, but I'm also asking that we must not be sucked in by the POVs because sometimes 
writers have their own biases and prejudices. So for example, reading the bath, the general feeling is that we are supposed to be empathetic towards aged people, that we are supposed to be more understanding to what they go through, good and well, that's good. But I think as a critic, we could also challenge the whole, uh, the whole scenario of projecting all women as sad, lonely people should not also should also be questioned because if you subscribe to that, then you start to believe that every old people do not have any more values to society. They are a burden, right? Um, but you could have said, um, this is the outcome of living alone, yeah, okay. This is the outcome of society not feeling sensitive to aging population, yeah, fine. We need that awareness. But I think the aging population also have something, a role to play. If you know that your life is now limited, you have to do something about it. But you know, the old, the old woman in the, in the bath refused to mingle, refused to go out, refused to do everything. So there is also a fault there, don't you think? Right? Class, I think problematize what the narrator or the writer is trying to push to. Always ask questions. What are you trying to say to us here? You know, are you saying aging population are so uh, sad, you know, that they cannot contribute to society? All they have to do is like from home to grave, grave to home. You don't have friends. What are you saying? You know, is this an exception? Is it is it is it true to everybody? Why can't we have a story where old people are doing more contribution to the society? You know. So I think um, I I mean I love the story. I'm just giving a critical appraisal of it, that it is too black and white. It is too sad, you know. And you know that life is not all down. There are days when it's down. There are days when it's good because Allah is ever merciful. If you give a very pessimistic portrayal of aged person like that, it doesn't give much hope to other people reading it. If I were there, not, you know, I would say, oh, I don't like growing old. It scares me. I'll be limited. I cannot get out of my own bath. There's no one to help me, you know. The society doesn't care about me. It is so, 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 so um, despairing to know. What's your take on this? Can you get what I'm trying to say, class? I know I get philosophical sometimes. And I hope you get what I'm trying to say. Yes, Prof. As for me, I think like uh, from me, uh, viewing the story of ba the bath mm -hmm. is I think um, rather than we always say something that uh, beautiful, uh, maybe the the writer try to show to us that there's there are people who live in this kind of misery and yeah, to expose mm -hmm. to us that there are some there are some people that are suffering in yeah. their own life yeah yeah i appreciate the story but i'm saying is that uh for the sake of being critical what is the other you know because we want to say a story has to be convincing right and i think for an optimistic person like me to be reading this dark story that everything is so hopeless, so sad, like sometimes 
it bores me, you know. Tapi sebenarnya I like lah the bath, you know. I I think it's a good story, but I'm saying that uh, what what kind of new creative writing can we come out? Because sometimes stories are spun because of the context. Take for example, everybody is happy. So you throw in a sad story to waken people up, to say, hey, you shouldn't be happy all the time. So you have the story. But if we are uh, living in a dark, gloomy age, do you want to throw in more dark and gloomy age stories? Can we have stories of hope so that we wake up, we spring up, and we fight back and bring back hope to life? This is what I'm saying. Now, some people disagree with Sufi literature some ulamas yeah, in this country. Because they say you must understand Sufi literature was created when there was a lot of wealth in the kingdom, in the caliphates. Yeah, yang zaman-zaman dulu lah, uh, king, Muslim king. There was, there was abundant of wealth that they forget how to live like Muslims. Right? So what happened? Great minds started to create Sufi stories that bring you back to the ground, saying that wealth is not everything, you must detach yourself from wealth, you must remember God, you know, to bring people back. So it suited that kind of literature was in context with what's happening then. So my point is, today's world, you know, everything is like shut down, locked down, and, you know, people are getting poorer and so on. Can we create stories that bring in hope so that we can motivate people who are reading it? What's your take on this? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Hmm. By looking the context, uh, okay, now I uh, more understand about it. Yeah, yeah. So, kita tak tahu contact Janet Frame. When did she write that? I suppose that could have been after the war. I didn't I didn't check when was uh, the buff written. Probably after the Second World War. And also, probably at a point when she was an aged person. You know, she's a, she, she got old. And this is what she's feeling. And she's going through that. I mean, sometimes I have that feeling as well. You know, getting up in the morning is such a hassle. I'm 58, going to be 59 in January. So sometimes, you know, I could relate to what she's saying. To get up from the bath is a problem, you know. You don't just spring up. But sometimes, you know, you have to go here, there, everywhere. So I could I could understand the context, you know. Uh, but as young people reading... As young people reading Janet Frame, the buff, how do you relate to that? How do you feel about aging? How does it change your perspective? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you you get yeah you get this feeling after listening or reading the bath, is it? Does it make you feel afraid? Does it does it make you understand your mother, father, or grandparents better? You do. You have a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you could you could understand and feel more for him now than before. That's very nice. That's good, love. No? Yeah, that's the one thing I like about the bath. Actually, I like it a lot. But just for the sake of, as scholars, you know, as a creative writer, scholars, you know, we are just not into creative writing because we have to think scholarly as well. We have to be critical. What what are the issues? How can we problematize this for the sake of problematizing? Because once we problematize things, we may get new dimension 
to it, right? I am of the one who feels strongly that you don't look down on old people. Uh, but I also feel that they should not overstay their welcome. Like some old people, they just don't want to go. You know, they just want to be in position forever. Wahal dah pencing kan? Tapi they don't want to give up the job. Bagilah orang muda pegang jawab tabla, betul tak? In our politics, you know, in administration and so on. So that's something else that I feel, I think that counters the story what Janet Frame is trying to say. On one hand, you've got this, this story in which they say, you know, when we, have, when we come to this age, this is how we feel. But on the other hand, there are those healthy, uh, aged people who don't just want to let go. They are so used to power, they don't want to let go power. What happens with, when you are, when you cling to power? You don't allow the natural process in which the young one grow old and should be taking over. You are the bottleneck. You 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 stop progress because you know how much can how, how much different can you bring if you are stuck in your old ways, old technologies, old science. Whereas the world has changed, the young ones has new science, new ways of thinking, new values, new understanding, a better understanding of what went wrong the world and so on. But you don't, you don't allow them to grow. Macam juga, tengok lah ya. I don't know, I think Trump will win. What's the update now? He's leading, right? The election. Is anybody following the US election? Yeah, but then people are voting, but he is still leading. Tadi, I tengok, 13-3. Habislah, hancur. Eh? Um, America. But maybe, I don't know. God has better plans, we don't know. All this happens with God's uh, will. Sometimes, if God wants to destroy something, you know, they say, if God wants to destroy something, he'll give you that person. That's it. But anyway... Uh, he wants to respond on anything before we wrap up? Nothing? Okay, if nothing, I will repeat our preparation. Please write this down unless I forget. Uh, we are doing... Um, Uh, point of view, third person, omnipresent, you, point of view, and then what else did I say just now? The tiger. What else? Can somebody remind me? Is it the, uh, the, the one that under third person or? The three type of point of view. Uh, yeah. Third person. First person? No, not first person. We're not doing that, right? Because we, I think yeah. we, we have discussed that extensively. You, we have not. You, point of view. Ah, the showing and the telling. So please remind, mm -hmm. yeah, Kairani, you as a class leader, uh, sometimes I forget. We are doing you, point of view, uh, and show samples of... Um, present and samples of showing tiga benda and if you have time please find an example of this to bring to class and say this is showing i love this paragraph because it shows so well something all right okay then uh hurun is leaving so okay uh, can you do this find a sample if you have time um of showing, yeah, and then we'll bring to class so that you understand better when you write, you will be able to visualize it better. So we'll stop here, we we'll finish with one us, and that's make a part of us. Okay, thank you, class. Assalamualaikum.